All right, let's talk about Devin White of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, a player who has gotten a lot of criticism uh, in Tampa Bay as obviously the expectations were sky high, fifth overall selection. He was, you know, great in the playoff run that, you know, accumulated in them winning a Super Bowl. So regardless of how it goes, you know, me as a Tampa Bay fan will always be very thankful for what he did that year, picked the right year to, you know, play his best football. However, even that year, he was inconsistent during the regular season, and really, it's kind of been worse and worse as his Tampa Bay career has gone along. More frustration in this game against the Indianapolis Colts, and let's talk about, uh, you know, really what goes wrong with him and why uh, it just isn't working, in my opinion, in Tampa Bay. Uh, starting off with a play like this, it's going to be a running play to the offense's left. You see where Devin White is on the field, and while I believe there's a double team where someone's supposed to eventually get off their block and get over to Devin White, it's not going to happen here. Watch. As you see, you're going to, you know, give the ball to Jonathan Taylor. We're right here, you know, Devin White, one-on-one -on -one against Jonathan Taylor, which, like, listen, I'm not going to sit here and say this is an easy situation going up one-on-one -on -one against Jonathan Taylor. He can make everybody miss, right? So, I get it, but at the same time, you gotta, you know, hopefully make the tackle. I mean, at least sometimes you're gonna have to make the tackle, right? So let's see how Devin White does here. Well, as you see, I mean, he gets maybe his hand on Jonathan Taylor. That's kind of it. Taylor gets by him and is able to get into the end zone for a touchdown. So again, this kind of thing is going to happen. It's Jonathan Taylor, right? Okay, he jukes you out at the goal line. What are you gonna do? Well. Jonathan Taylor was not the only Colts player who was able to juke Devin White out at the goal line in this game. Heading over here, what's going to happen is this is going to be a, a third down and goal situation. So a big play. Again, maybe if the Colts don't get it, they go for it on fourth down. But still, you would like to, hey, maybe you uh, stop them on fourth down too. And now you are still just down seven. You know, definitely there's possibilities of good things happening here. Gardner Minshew will take the snap and run towards the bottom of the screen, and you see where I've circled Devin White. He is the linebacker uh, closest towards that side of the field on this play. Watch as you're going to see Minshew rolls out towards the offense's right, uh, and, you, you know, Devin White is, you know, somewhat in position. He has some ground to cover, but there's an opportunity for him to make this play, so okay, let's see how he does. Watch White, you know, run down Minshew, but overruns him. Minshew is able to make a move and get into the end zone for a touchdown. I mean, that's just, it's a tackle you have to make. It is. And it was a good move by Minshew, right? You got to give credit to the Colts for sure. But like, if you're going to be a solid NFL linebacker, like that's all I care about. Solid NFL linebacker. We don't need you to be a superstar. Uh, if you're going to be a solid NFL linebacker, you have to be able to make these tackles most of the time. And it feels like when he has, when you know, when he has to make a play, when it's him versus someone else, feels like far more often than not the somebody else wins. And again, when it's Jonathan Taylor, it is what it is. But when it's you know Gardner Minshew, that's when it's like, man, we need you to win some of these. And then there's plays like this where I, sometimes I just wonder, like, what he's, what's he doing? I, I see that a lot. And again, it's hard, right? I'm sitting here watching the broadcast footage. I get a good angle of it. You know, he's playing on the field. It's harder to see what's going on. Of course, all of that stuff is true. But, you know, we're talking about the best athletes in the world and, you know, the best football players in the world. So, yes, obviously, I could never do anything close to what any of them could do. But let's talk about what he's going to do on this play. It's, you know... Uh, an interesting play where the way this is going to work for the Colts is they're going to pull their center towards the offense's right. So the center is going to go to the offense's right and try to go in between the guard and the tackle. All right. Well, you know, again, I've circled where Devin White is on the uh, field. Let's watch what happens. Right when this play begins, it's actually kind of a dream scenario for Tampa Bay. The center cannot get through the intended gap. And now for Devin White, uh, you know, he well, looks over and he should be in a good spot. The issue is, I think Devin White doesn't realize what Jonathan Taylor realizes. Hey, it's probably better to just run through the gap straight forward. As you see, I mean, White just wasn't looking at Jonathan Taylor. He was looking at the blocking concept, got fooled, and Taylor was able to run by him. Again, it happens, right? These are things that happen, but they just happen at such a high consistency with White at this point. And, you know, people talk about him as if he's a good run defender. He's not. He's, I mean, he's, he's just not. Uh, he, well, he will make good plays. And in fact, let's show a good play because I don't want to turn this into complete Devin White bashing. 
Like, it's this kind of play that drives you crazy when watching Devin White, because every now and then, he looks like he's Ray Lewis or something out there, right? Like, he looks like he's Brian Erlacher. He has those occasional unbelievable plays. This one is going to be a block towards the offense's left. Uh, it's actually a wildcat situation, and Devin White is the linebacker to the offense's right. So, okay, not expecting him to come in and make a play here. So Taylor takes the snap, and you get to the point where you're right here, and so there is a tight end who's supposed to pull over, and he's the guy who would eventually block Devin White on this play, but White already is in really good position. He already gets to the gap. I think a lot of players might play a little patient here, but White is always someone who is going to play aggressive to a fault, uh, but also to a strength, and in this scenario, watch what he does. Watch him run in. He gets by the blocker who you know, couldn't get over there in time and really helps make that play. That's like a superstar level play. He can do that kind of thing, and th that's what I, I think that you know, that's why coaches fall in love with him, and that's probably why he can oftentimes get overvalued. Something I talk a lot about is a lot of times with certain linebackers, they're, you know, I, I always make the baseball comparison. There's certain linebackers that hit for a high batting average, and then some linebackers hit a, you know, a lot of home runs. Every now and then you have the guy who can do both, the Levante David, who, you know, uh, he'll hit 300 with 40 home runs, right? Every now and then you get one of those guys, uh, but sometimes you get a guy with a high batting average but doesn't get the splash plays. Devin White is the opposite. Devin White has a very low batting average. You know, he, he hits under 200. Uh, he might hit some bombs, but quite frankly, even the home runs these past couple of years have gone down, which is kind of what makes him, you know, uh, tough to play at this point. And like heading over here, I mean, this 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 happens where every now and then you see him just get blocked completely out of the way. On this play, they're going to double team an interior defensive lineman, get up to block Devin White. Okay, let's see how it goes. Well, right when this play begins, you see that right here, okay, you know, they were able to get in position to block White. I don't know how much blame I put on White there. It was well blocked, you know, at the first level to get up to this, you know, uh, second level. Okay, fine. I get it. But also watch how Devin White just gets completely blocked until he's off screen right there. He gets blocked way downfield, uh, and luckily for him to play stop, because otherwise he would have just kept getting blocked, it feels like. Which, again, you know, it happens to everybody. What, what linebacker hasn't had these types of games? But especially when you have these, you know, I think uh, you have Levante David next to you. Like, he, obviously not in this game, but in general, things should be better. The reality is he doesn't have to be a superstar and got kind of, you know, the Levante David factor really does a lot of times free him up to be able to just do his splash plays, right? Because like he is still one of the best blitzing linebackers in football. I, I do believe that and there is value in that. But as of right now, I mean, I don't know how much everyone loves pro football focus grades, but currently Devin White, the lowest graded linebacker, and his run defense grade is the second lowest in football. Uh, you know, coverage is seventh lowest in football. And then, you know, even his pass rush grade hasn't been great this season. So because of that, it's kind of like, man, this is a guy who, he, you know, reportedly wants $20 million. I don't even know how much value he brings to the table. I think some. I think that the splash plays still are good enough that, like, it's probably worth the negatives a lot of the times. But he has to be in a very specific situation. And right now, it's just not working. And I think the better move would probably be to trade him to someone else. You know, tag him, trade him to someone else, and kind of wipe your hands clean. Or if you can't get any value, just let him walk in free agency. Uh, I really hope, you know, as a Tampa Bay fan, I don't think it's the right call to be giving him $20 million a year uh, like, you know, th like that conversation has been. I don't think it's the right call to give him $10 million a year. I really don't at this point. Uh, that's, that's where I'm at. But, you know, hey, uh, maybe I'm stupid. Let me know if I am in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.